Hi, and welcome to Time to Be Well. I'm Kathy Berry, registered dietitian with the Fountain of Health. And on today's show, we're gonna be freezing some vegetables. It is fall, it is football weather. We love our chiefs, we love our chili. And so we're gonna freeze some tomatoes, some peppers. So stay right there, when we get back, we're gonna put up the produce. All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna freeze some things. We're gonna freeze some tomatoes, we're gonna freeze some okra, we're gonna freeze some peppers. There are many things that you can freeze. And freezing is super simple and super easy. And it's a great way to take advantage of what is in season. Because right now, all of these tomatoes and peppers and okra are a super, super inexpensive buy. But later on, in January and February, that's not gonna be the case. So it's really nice if you can process them now, tuck them away in your freezer, it doesn't take a lot of space, then you kind of get yourself ahead of the game as you go into the winter. Um, the thing that I love about freezing so much is it takes no skill. All you need is a pot and a bowl and some vegetables and some freezer bags. You don't even need a big freezer. You can stack them really flat so anybody can do this. Sometimes canning is a little bit intimidating, but this is a really great introductory lesson on how to preserve food for the coming winter. So we've got a pot of boiling water and we're gonna blanch these tomatoes. Now, when you blanch vegetables, what it does is, is it stops the enzymatic process. And the enzymatic process is what ripens vegetables. And when vegetables are at their peak, that's when you wanna actually process them. So we're gonna put these tomatoes in here and we're gonna let them cook for probably two or three minutes, just enough to stop that enzymatic process of ripening. And then when we take them out and plunge them into this cold icy water bath, then the skins will slip right off. Now, some people just put their tomatoes right in the freezer. But then what happens is, as you cook them, then the skins have to come off later. And that's kind of tricky. You have to take them out of your soup or your chili or whatever it is that you're making. So I kind of like to do the traditional method of blanching the tomatoes, letting them come up to a boil and simmer for a couple of minutes, then plunging them into the ice bath, slip the skins off, smash them in a Ziploc bag, squeeze the air out, and into the freezer they go. It's that simple. You can do that with corn, you can do it with peaches, you can do it with just about anything. So it's a really great way to take advantage of what's in season right now. Now I wanna show you an example of what enzymatic browning is. This is what will happen when a, anything ripens. And when you put that in the freezer without blanching it, this will continue to happen, whereas when you freeze it, it will stay more like this, in terms of color, in terms of texture, and in terms of vitamin integrity. So it's a really nice little trick that you can keep things right at their peak. So we're gonna let our tomatoes simmer here for a couple of minutes. They've got to get back up to a boil and cook for a little bit. And I want to talk to you a little bit about why this is so fun to do. First of all, we live in the Midwest. We're farmers. We're, we, we grow food. We grow lots of food here in Kansas City, in Kansas, and in Missouri. And this, this little thing that we do in our kitchen supports our local ag agriculture, supports all of those little farmers that have the little roadside farms. This is what supports them, so that's pretty awesome. The other thing that it does is it connects us with who we are. This, all of this, this was grown right here, right here within 50 miles in this good Missouri dirt. So, you know, as winter goes on and you're making your chili and you're making your gumbo and you're making your spaghetti sauce, I don't know, there's something kind of magic about that, that these peppers and these tomatoes 
came from right here. And yes, you can absolutely go to the store and buy them, but you can't buy that. That's pretty special. So it, it's a really nice way to link us with our, our local farmers. It also connects us with our roots here in Kansas City. And it's, I mean, practically, it, from a practical standpoint, it just makes really good sense. It's a very good way to save some money as the winter goes on. Um, another example of why this is so fun to me is it sort of practices um, the ability to be self-reliant, to the ability to be able to, when you go to work and somebody says, hey, we're having a pitch in on Friday, can you bring some chili? And you're like, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I can. I've got tomatoes. I always have beans in my pantry. I've got a pound of ground beef in my freezer. I've got onions. So it makes you very self-reliant and kind of prepared. So those are all really good reasons to kind of do this. All right, our tomatoes are blanched. She's just not from the Golden Girls anymore. So these tomatoes, they're not perfect. I mean, I think you've, you saw us taking them apart and there were some bad spots, but they may not look perfect, but they're perfectly good for what we're gonna use them for and it's a great way to not waste them. So if you have a garden, or if your neighbor has a garden, or you, um, you know, inherit some tomatoes at work, this is a great thing to do with them, even if they've got a bad spot or a brown spot. You don't, you don't have to throw them away at all. They are very, very usable. So. The reason why we put these into this ice water in this blanching process is that we want to, we want to stop that enzymatic browning process. We want that ripening to stop, but we don't want them to cook all the way through. So this ice bath stops them from cooking. We don't want to cook them. We just want to blanch them. We just want them to stay at their, their peak. So every vegetable has a different blanching time. It kind of depends on how uh, dense they are. And tomatoes are about one to two minutes. So we take them out of this boiling water and we put them into this ice bath. That stops them. And then we take their little skins off and we gave them all a little X at the bottom, so that will help us with that. Now, if I were doing this and we weren't filming it, I would take this big old pot of boiling tomatoes and I would march it right over to the kitchen sink. I would drain it in one side and on the other side, I would fill that up with ice and water and then I would plop those tomatoes right in that sink. But for filming purposes, so you can see what we're doing, we're doing it this way. There's nothing magic about the bowl. I just want you to be able to see it. So now these tomatoes are cooling down. You also want them to cool down, not just to stop the enzymatic process, but you can't really work with them with your hands when they're boiling hot. So it's practical. So as you can see, here we go. Here's one and see the skin just comes right off. That's perfect. We love that, that's exactly what we want because you don't want this in the top of your chili or your spaghetti sauce. So we're just gonna move this over here. We'll make a little pile of those. And then you just simply take these skins off just like that. And you can quarter them if you like. You can put them into Ziploc bags whole I like to kind of take the core out and then I put them into the uh, Ziploc bag. I'll show you how I do this. And then I like to smush them. Um, and if you have kids, they would really like that. That's really fun. It's kind of like uh, Lucy and Ethel in the grapes, except we're doing it with our hands and the tomatoes, but it's the same concept. It's very fun. It's very messy. Kids love it. Okay, so you can see, this is how we do this. It's pretty simple. But unless you blanch them, you can't get those skins off. 
And as you can see, those are really pretty. I mean, those are pretty tomatoes. The other thing that I really love about this whole freezing process, especially when it comes with, comes to kids in the kitchen, is I think one of the most important skills that you can teach your children is how to cook. You don't have to be a fancy cook and you don't have to have a fancy kitchen. You don't have to have fancy equipment, but everybody needs to learn how to cook. And this is just, you know, one more, one more thing, one more thing that you can do, one more thing that you can teach your kids or your grandkids or any stray that happens to be in your house while you're doing this. This is a really good learning opportunity for our kids to learn how to cook, how to be responsible, how to fend for themselves, how to prepare food for people they love. Good skills, all really, really good skills. Okay, I am taking some of the cores out of these tomatoes. I had some Roma tomatoes or the, and they don't have much of a core, so they don't need much coring, but there's some other ones that did have a bigger core. So we're just taking those out. They're not very attractive, nor are they very edible. So we're gonna cut out the cores on some of them. Some of them you didn't need to take the core out because they were of the Roma variety, and so they didn't have much of a core, like that guy. So here we go, look at this sauce. Now the reason that I love these frozen tomatoes rather than canned tomatoes is that um, if you're gonna make like a really good fresh tomato sauce with basil and garlic and onions and just this sauce. It makes a fantastic marinara over a simple little spaghetti squash or penne pasta, fantastic. And when they're frozen, they have that fresh flavor. So I really like the canned, canned tomatoes for that example. Now this is kind of messy, but I'm gonna show you um, how you go about doing this. And again, you don't have to have a great big freezer. You don't have to have a ton of freezer space, but you could put these in quart bags. I'm going to put it in a big gallon bag because I'm going to use these for my Christmas gumbo. I always make Christmas gumbo. So these tomatoes, I've got a freezer bag. All I do is I get a nice big ladle and we just put these tomatoes right in here like this, simple. These Missouri grown tomatoes. And tomatoes are really good for you because uh, first of all, they're super high in vitamin C and vitamin C protects us from colds. It's a really good infection fighter. Oop, there's one with a core. And it also is a cancer fighter. It has a really nice antioxidant called lycopene which is a good cancer fighter, and it is also really good for our eyeballs. So, helps you see well, good cancer fighter. So, tomatoes are really a superfood, and they're so versatile. You can do so many things with tomatoes. You know, every time I make uh, soup or stew, you know, I always add some tomatoes because they just give it a really nice, rich flavor, and they also, their acid also kind of helps um, soften, whoops, that guy needs to have the core taken out, kind of helps soften the, um, the meat, whatever you're using, kind of tenderizes it and gives it a little bit of depth. See how messy this is? Very fun for kids. They would love this. And you know, it, it will make a mess in your kitchen. It will, not even going to lie, but it's a good mess. You know, that's how we learn how to do things. You don't learn how to do things when it's all perfect and neat. You have to experiment a little bit. Yep, that's all good stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold this open and uh, pour the rest of this in here. Just like that. And then this is the fun part. Okay, this is the Lucy and Ethel. Because I don't want this to have big chunks, this is what, you just put your hand in there and crush them. That's crushed tomatoes. I'm sure that's what the people do in, at, you know, Roma tomatoes that you buy. I'm sure that's how they crush their tomatoes. That's how I crush my tomatoes. And there they are. So then all we do is we just seal it. And then once it's sealed, you're going to lay it on its side like this, sort of, 
open the bag a tiny bit, squish all the air out because we don't want any oxidation to happen. Close it back up. And then I would probably put this in another little freezer bag. We also want to leave a little bit of space so it doesn't expand and break. And you're going to lay it in your freezer just like that. And that's going to be Christmas gumbo. Okay. Alrighty. So now we're going to move on and we're going to do our peppers and our okra. Here we go. We're gonna do our next batch. We've got some peppers and we're gonna put the peppers in this big pot over here. My friend Janine and I cut up a whole bunch of peppers this morning and uh, they're gonna blanch for a couple of minutes in that bowl. We've also got some okra. I love okra. Okra is great in gumbo. Love it, love it, love it. So these guys are gonna get busy blanching. Peppers are really good for you because, first of all, they're really versatile. You can use these, you could use these for fajitas, you can use them for chili, you can use them in so many different things. So great to have some peppers all sliced up in little bags in your freezer because then whenever you're making chili or whenever you're making fajitas or whenever you need some green peppers, you've got it. You don't have to run to the store and think, oh, I need a pepper. So that's all set for you. Okra, maybe not quite so versatile, but there are some dishes that you have to have okra for, and gumbo is one of them. Now, some people like to make fried okra. I'm more of a, I'm, I'm more of a gumbo girl myself, but okra is one of those things that has, um, uh, it, it's really high in fiber and it has soluble fiber. Not everything has soluble fiber. Oats have soluble fiber, but okra has soluble fiber as well. It's got lots of little um, seeds and it has a very interesting kind of texture. Really like okra. Peppers are super high in vitamin C, and they're also just a really, really nice addition to lots and lots of different dishes. So we are going to let these blanch for two minutes a piece, bring them up to a boil, then we'll put them in their, uh, their uh, ice bath. And I'm going to show you how little space this all takes in your freezer and how easy it is to kind of just get a jump on your fall and winter cooking. Alrighty, my okra is ready to go in her ice bath. She is going to make some fine, fine gumbo on Christmas Eve. And it will be really fun to think about where this came from, when we froze it, you know, a couple of episodes ago, we made this um, episode that was called Crock-Pot Mania, and we had all these uh, five, four dishes that went from your uh, freezer to your Crock-Pot, and these, ex this, this right here would be perfect ingredients for that. So it really is a great time saver and money saver to freeze some vegetables that are really plentiful and really inexpensive right now, right this very week. The other thing that's really fun to do is, you know, when you're at the farmer's market, ask the farmer 
ask the vendors, hey, do you have any seconds? Because those tomatoes that we put together, they, there were some bruises and there were some spots, but they're perfect. They're wonderful to cook with. And so rather than, you know, throwing them away, it's really good to process them. And you also can get a really good deal and make a, you know, meet a farmer, make a relationship with the farmer. Say, hey, do you have any seconds? I want to freeze. I want a can. You never know. I was just at the grass pad yesterday looking for some rhododendrons and ferns and The man that I was talking to said, well, they're kind of beat up, but I'll give them to you for a dollar a pot. So, I mean, you never know what you're going to find out there if you just ask. And it doesn't mean that they won't work well and they won't be perfectly good for what you're using them for. So there's our peppers and there's our okra. So we're going to let them cool down. We want to stop that. Stop that process. And you can see these peppers are nice and bright. This okra, okra is nice and bright. That's just what we want. We just wanted to stop the cooking process and then, or, and, and stop the ripening process and then we'll freeze it right at the peak of its ripeness and it will be ready for us for fajitas. for chili, for all kinds of different things. I would put this in smaller bags because you typically only need like one pepper. So I would put these peppers rather than have like a great big gallon bag of peppers. I would use a quart or even smaller and then they'll be all individually ready for you to go. There's all kinds of recipes that just call for a cup of peppers. You know in our city and in many cities we talk about food deserts areas where there's not uh, plentiful grocery stores or plentiful produce. This is a perfect example of how that could help help people if you live in an area where there's not a grocery store really nearby or if you have limited transportation or the grocery store doesn't have great produce. Anybody can put some peppers and some okra and some tomatoes in their freezer and that really can help you get through bad weather or not being able to get to the grocery store for whatever reason. So that's that whole self-reliance that we were talking about, that whole preparedness. It feels good to be prepared. It feels very satisfying to use your gifts and, and to not waste. You know, these are our gifts. We live, in, we live in the Midwest, and this is what we do. We grow food, and, it's, and it feels very, very satisfying to not waste it and to, to put it in your freezer and have it for January. Maybe, maybe you're sick. Maybe you need to stay home, and you, you just need to make a pot of soup, and how wonderful that is to have some good stuff in your freezer that you can use. So there's all kinds of applications why this is helpful. Whether you're elderly or whether you don't have good transportation. Freezing food is pretty simple. Now we've got our okra. Once again, this okra is a, this is a really old fashioned vegetable, really old southern vegetable. I love it. I think it looks like little jewels. And it's so good in gumbo. A few uh, seasons ago, we made a really nice gumbo recipe that we always make for Christmas time. 
It's a really nice dish to make. It's really inexpensive and really hearty and tasty. So, has very simple ingredients, but it has a great big flavor profile with all the different vegetables and some shrimp, some sausage, chicken. All righty. So we've got, look at this. We've got all these nice little bags of okra. All these nice bags of peppers all ready to go for fajitas, chili, nachos, you name it. And I will tell you that all of those tomatoes, all of those peppers, all of those, all of that okra costs less than $20. And I know that if you purchased this in February, it would probably cost double or triple of that. So I'm gonna show you in my freezer how little space this takes up. You don't need to have a lot of equipment. We have two pots, we have two bowls, we have some Ziploc bags. So it's very easy to store. So in the freezer, in this little top part, there's our beautiful tomatoes. And now I'm just gonna stack in here. We've got all of our nice little peppers. And here's our okra. And that is not very much space at all. And once they're frozen, you could even stack them all on top of each other. So that just took a tiny bit of this freezer. So not very much space at all. Okay, so here's a package of tomato sauce that I made earlier yesterday. And I'm just gonna pop this into some homemade stew I'm making for dinner tonight. So all I do is just run it under hot water and open the bag pop it right in the stew. It's fantastic. So really easy, really simple little trick. So I just want to thank you for joining us today. Fall is one of my favorite times of the year and I think many people agree. It's a time of football and family and cooking and being together. So thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something about how to preserve our bountiful harvest that we have here in Kansas City. So enjoy. Thanks for watching and taking care of yourself through better health and better nutrition. You can find all of these recipes and many more on kcmo.gov and just search for Time to Be Well.